Okay, good morning everybody. Let's go ahead and move on with number eight. So, number eight says elemental phosphorus reacts with chlorine gas to form phosphorus trichloride. If it initially contains blah, 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 and blah, 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 how much heat can be absorbed and released? This is gonna be a two-step process. Um, step number one, we have to find um, enthalpy of the reaction because we can't find anything about how much heat is absorbed or released in the reaction using stoichiometry because this gives us grams of two different things which tells us we're probably going to be using stoichiometry um, and we don't know anything about the enthalpy of the reaction until we figure this um, this out or we can't find anything about heat until we figure that out so step number one uh, delta H of the reaction equals all the H of formation of the products minus the delta H of formation of the reactants. All right, so first we probably ought to balance this reaction, figure out what's going on. We got P4 plus chlorine gas, yielding PCl3. Over here we need four phosphoruses. Over here, phosphori maybe. You got one. Over here now we have 12 chlorine, so we need a sixth there, and this looks pretty balanced to me. To find the delta H of the reaction, again, we need the total delta H of the, uh, the products, and then we can subtract the reactants from it. The products over here, we got four times our PCl3, which is negative 287 kilojoules per mole. And these cancel because this is actually for mole, and this is kilojoules per mole, or mole cancel. Uh, the units of mole, not the actual number. So we have four times negative 287, um, which is negative 1148 kilojoules over here. And then my delta H of the reactant. So over here I have one mole times 58.9 kilojoules per mole. Because chlorine is in the standard state, it's gonna be zero. So otherwise we have six moles times whatever chlorine is, but it happens to be zero. And the total over here is 58.9. So my delta H of my reaction equals negative 1148 minus 58.9, and all these are in kilojoules. If you calculate that out, you get negative 1206.9 kilojoules. All right, so that's all fun and dandy. But, what does that really tell us? So what that tells us right now is that P4 plus 6Cl2 yielding 4PCl3, excuse me, has a delta H of negative 1206.9 kilojoules. So for every one mole of phosphorus that reacts with six moles of chlorine gas, you're going to get four moles of PCl3, and it's going to release 1206.9 kilojoules. So it kind of works like stoichiometry. We're looking at coefficients one to six to four to this number. All right, so now the next question says, how much is released or absorbed when we have 45.13 grams of phosphorus and 132 0 0.0 grams of chlorine. First thing we do, put this into moles. You divide this by the mass of P4, and you divide this by the mass of chlorine. So this, the mass of P4 is like, I don't know, 122 or something like that. The mass of chlorine is, is 70.9. And you put that into moles. So when I put it into moles, I have 1.862 mole of P4. And, oh, excuse me. It's all backwards. 0 0.364 mole of P4 and 1.862 mole of chlorine gas. Now you look and see which one is the limiting reactant. You divide this by 1, divide this by 6, ask which one is, ask which one is smaller. This is smaller, this is my limiting reactant, so this is the one that I'm going to use. 1.862 mole of chlorine gas. I know for every six moles of chlorine gas, 
just like stoichiometry, the thing that I'm interested in now is not, it's not P4, it's not PCL3, it's now this, negative 1206.9 kilojoules. So now our units become kilojoules. And if you calculate this out, you get an answer of negative 374.5 kilojoules. And what that tells us is if you have this many grams of B4 and this many grams of Cl2 gas, and all that can react does, you will have um, this much heat released. I'm right, now on to number, number nine. All right, so number nine states um, a bomb calorimeter contains 900 grams of water and it was calibrated by burning a sample of benzoic acid and we know the heat of combustion of benzoic acid when 1.890 grams of benzoic acid is burned in the calorimeter the temperature went up and the calorimeter increased by 832 as well so using this data calculate the calorimeter constant for this calorimeter in joules per degree celsius all right so a few things uh, we need to look at the word calorimeter, when we think calorimeter, we need to be thinking we need Q. We need some kind of heat of some sort. But let's walk through this. We have a few different things happening here. So you got this calorimeter, bomb calorimeter, and it's surrounded, it has this like surrounding layer of water. And we know there's 900 grams of water. So this is what's like water. And then inside there, there's also a sample of benzoic acid. We'll call it BA. All right, so the benzoic acid explodes, essentially. It burns off, and it, all these bonds are broken. And it lets off heat. Well, that heat goes into two places. It's going to go into the water. So this will let out heat into the water. And it will also go into the calorimeter. So what we're looking at here is, is the following. Essentially the heat of benzoic acid, everything that it released, so it's gonna be negative, everything that the benzoic acid lost is equal to everything that the water and everything that the calorimeter gained. So everything the benzoic acid lost when it exploded is equal to all the heat that the water gained and all the heat that the calorimeter itself, like the jacket, the walls of the actual calorimeter gained. So we need to ask ourselves, can we find each of these individual things? If we can, we can find um, the C of the calorimeter because it's, it's going to be innate. When we get over there, we'll, it, we'll figure it out. All right, so um, let's go ahead and see if we can find the Q of benzoic acid first. When you go to find the Q of the benzoic acid, you will realize, generally speaking, we've known that Q equals mc delta t. We also found another way to do it in class, and it's using the heat of formation, but or heat of combustion, excuse me. But we don't have, we have the mass. Do we have the C? We don't have the C of benzoic acid. We're not given that. And we don't really know its initial temperature change, although I guess we can assume that it is the same as the other, but we don't know the C. So there's an issue, but we are given another piece of data. We are given the fact that this heat of combustion is that. So instead of MC delta T, we have some other information. We know, yes, that its mass equals 1.890 grams. We're also given this random delta H of combustion equals negative 322, 3227 kilojoules per mole. All right, cool beans. So that's kilojoules per mole. Ooh, maybe a light bulb should go off. We're, we're trying to get Q. Q has to be in heat. So we need Q up here. We need Q in joules or kilojoules. That's the unit of heat. So we're trying to get joules or kilojoules somehow. We have grams and we have kilojoules per mole, but we can turn grams into moles by using the mass of benzoic acid, which they gave us too. 
maybe that should be a bit of a hint, of 122.1 grams per mole. And when you calculate this out, you get an answer of 0 0.01548 mole. So we know that when benzoic acid combusts, it lets out that many kilojoules of heat per mole, but we don't have one whole mole, we only have this many moles. We have 0 0.01548 mole of benzoic acid. And we know for every one mole, you let off negative 3227 kilojoules. If you calculate that out, you'll find out it's negative 49.94 kilojoules. In other words, the heat released by the benzoic acid is negative 49.94 kilojoules. All right, cool. That means up here, we've got a negative times a negative 49.94 kilojoules is equal to water plus Q calorimeter. Now let's figure out what the water is or the calorimeter. Moving on to the water, we are given some data that makes things a little easier because we know that Q equals MC delta T like up here. We're not given any of this information, but we are given the fact that the, the mass of water is 900 grams. We're given the sea of water is 4.184 joules per gram Kelvin because we had to memorize it. And we're also given the delta T is 8.42 degrees Celsius, which would also be 8.42 K. This could also be joules per gram degrees Celsius. These two are interchangeable when we're talking about the delta. Anytime you have delta, C and K are interchangeable. Are interchangeable. Okay, so we have Q equals MC delta T here, and we can actually solve for the Q of the water. So Q of the water equals 900 grams times 4.184 joules per gram. Let's go ahead and do Celsius because I'm feeling fun today. And times the delta T, which is 8.42 degrees Celsius. When you calculate this out, you'll find out that the heat of combustion of the water is 31,706 joules. In other words, let's make things simple on ourselves this morning, 31.7 kilojoules. My dog is thirsty. Okay, back to this. All right, so now when we go up here, we find out, again, we know the heat of the question of this is equal to 31.7 kilojoules plus the Q calorimeter. We don't know anything about the calorimeter. Essentially, all we can figure out is this, but we do know that the heat of the calorimeter um, can be found using this. So let's go ahead and do that. So negative 40, a negative negative 49.94 kilojoules is equal to 31.7 kilojoules plus Q calorimeter. And if you do that, you'll find out that Q calorimeter is equal to 18.2 three, three uh, kilojoules. All right, when we go to find C now, C is given to us in units of joules per degree Celsius because this is C of a calorimeter. This is called 
heat capacity. And in this case, joules per degree C, the heat capacity is not specific heat. It doesn't depend on mass. Mass is already factored in there. All we know is all the information we actually need, that there are 18,233 joules for an 8.42 degree change. In other words, we're trying to figure out how many joules it changed per one degree. We know it changed this total amount in 8.4 degrees, and therefore we can figure out uh, exactly how much it would change per one degree. It would change 2166 joules per degree Celsius, and that would be our answer. Hooray! Um, some other things to note, so heat capacity, again, doesn't depend on mass, but specific heat capacity does. So specific heat capacity has to do with um, how much of each thing you have. That's the one where we're talking about joules per, or joules per gram times degree Celsius. So this is where grams actually comes into effect. Um, calorimetry uh, for a bomb calorimeter or some other type of calorimeter, you're not asking about the mass of the actual calorimeter, you're asking about the heat capacity of the calorimeter. How much heat does that calorimeter take in? Whereas when you're looking at specific heat capacity of like um, lead or iron, etc. This is when we're going to have joules per gram C. So just, just to clarify a little bit about some things that you might see. But again, um, pretty fun problem. It came down to the fact of, did you understand that the heat lost by the benzoic acid was equal to the heat gained by the water and the heat gained by the jacket added up together? Um, once you figured that out, then you could figure out the heat of each. We knew the heat of benzoic acid um, couldn't be calculated by normal means, and we had to use... Uh, the, the heat of combustion which was given to us. So the heat of combustion was in kilojoules per mole. So we multiplied it by the number of moles there to get the total number of kilojoules that the benzoic acid released. And then we looked at the water. Okay, so how much uh, heat did the water gain? We had all the information we needed for, for water. We had M, C, and delta T. So we were able to figure out the exact amount for water. And then from there, we were able to just kind of solve and figure out how much uh, heat the Q calorimeter must have gained and we know the heat per um, degree Celsius to figure out the C of the calorimeter. All right, have a good morning, happy studying.